Two Country Radio. Find us on Facebook and Twitter. We play more music every hour, every day. Two Country Radio. Turn on. Hey, we're Little Big Town. You're listening to Two Country Radio. Well, first of all, thank you for taking the time to talk to us here at Two Country Radio. Yeah. I just want to go back a bit because we've not spoken to you guys before. Um, you started out, obviously, in the late 1990s, but things really changed for you in sort of 2011, 2012. You really suddenly gained the recognition that you guys deserved. What happened at that point to suddenly change everything? A song. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Pontoon. That's what happened. That changed everything. Yeah. yeah, that whole record, that song, the right team, you know, um, a brilliant manager, um, just all the the right TV moments for Pontoon. And, the right label. Yeah, just like everything finally, it takes a lot, you know, to have those kind of magical It's moments. like the, I call it the Eric Church, Church Chief moment. Yeah. When that yes. Chief album came, everything yeah. changed. Right. And that, it was yeah. like that for you guys. Suddenly, yeah. Yeah. everybody knew who you were, you were winning awards, and yeah. it just really sort of stepped up your career I think in everyone's view. It was incredible. Well the common denominator too is Jay Joyce there, ah. um, Chief <laughs> and on Painkiller, the, the producer. There you go then. So let's talk about this year because it's been a full-on year for you. You started early part of the year headlining a tour here. How was it to come back and headline after doing the C2C previously? It was beautiful. Incredible. incredible. Yeah you definitely felt the impact of the C to C, C, to C um, uh, performance and I think it just kind of introduced us to people and then when we came back and people actually showed up to our shows <laughs> and they were so um, had clearly you know really just taken our music and and took it in and knew the songs that we would never would have thought they would have known yes. from we past are records. Driven, yeah. I know, and it's fantastic. It was so we love exciting that. and thrilling and emotional and it, it really just some of the best shows we've ever had coming over here, so it was thrilling. Brilliant. I found, for me, watching it at C2C the first time, I was just blown away by your harmonies. It's all so natural it just seems to happen i think that's what everyone suddenly went oh, i need to see more of these guys <laughs> and when you announced it like, oh, right, and the same with this evening and you know it's amazing and once the uk fans take you into the fold that's it <laughs> you're never leaving us oh, that's they, amazing. you find I love that's that great <laughs> love it yeah. that's great absolutely you find artists like phil vassar and people like that they are still absolutely so, welcomed here all the time so it's amazing it's thrilling so then you did that, and then you had vocal surgery. I did. How <laughs> difficult was it to make the decision to cancel tour dates? It didn't have a choice, really. Yeah, it's definitely not a an easy decision, but um, I kind of just had hit the place where they told me I had no choice. It, it had had some bleeding, and once that starts happening, then you have to fix it. And, um, yeah, that's... Canceling shows, we've never been a band that cancels shows. Um, we work through it. If we're struggling or whatever, we just show up and, and do the best we can. So that's something we haven't done a lot in our career. So it w wasn't easy. And I definitely felt the weight of that um, through that whole process. But they were incredibly supportive um, throughout that whole ordeal. So. And how hard was it to keep him quiet to rest? <laughs> He was very it is not a natural. <laughs> quiet is not natural for me. No, he, really he did get really, really funny though. On his text messages, he became funnier. I remember seeing a video. Thank you. <laughs> it was fun. And then we move on to Girl Crush. Now, obviously, for you guys, that was a massive, massive. song. Massive. You know? And the media storm that was something out of nothing that came around that. Um, probably helped the song along, but I'm it sure. also, you know, opened people's eyes to the song that maybe wouldn't have. Yeah. yeah. How was it for you guys being the centre of that sort of storm around it? That was a new experience for us. We haven't really had an experience like that before. And um, I, I think we were probably shocked in the beginning going, oh, wow, we didn't really think about that or see that coming. I think us in the UK saw that as well. <laughs> it's going on. <laughs> right. 
Um, but, you know, it was a small group of people that were just being very loud. Yes. And um, quickly the, the positive took over all the negative. Um, yeah. Because you're right, probably people looked up the song to see what all the controversy was about. And I think people were like, well, I don't really understand what you're not understanding about this but i love the song and people began to buy it even more and and it's yeah a i mean beautiful it, song your vocals on it are just so amazing pure yes to listen to yeah. and how could anyone not buy into it and of course because of that you won uh you had a record for the longest number one for a group yeah how when you heard that you know where were you how did you feel when you heard that <laughs> Oh. It, it kept happening week after week, and we were like, is it going to happen again next week? And it did happen again next week, and then the next week, and... And then um, they said we were approaching the, the record, which was held by a group called Three Bells, like in 1959, yeah. most consecutive weeks at number one, and then we broke that record. It was just like, I, I was really just so grateful. <laughs> yeah, that's something so cool. we didn't expect. <laughs> <laughs> You do your Scattered, Smothered and Covered. I've seen you do a few of them, they're absolutely yes. brilliant. Would you ever consider putting any of those on your album or making an album of them? We've toyed around with the idea of doing an album of them. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know if we would. They just feel like they're these little moments. I mean, the closest one we've done in a long time, we haven't really done one. We did... Uh, <laughs> was uh, at the Greek with Tori Kelly. That was kind of a yeah. a scattered, smothered, and covered. We covered. She came out on stage with us, and we did um, "Should Have Been Us." Do you know Tori? I <laughs> don't very well. Incredible singer. She's great. Singer. So yeah, I don't know. Would we do that? I don't know. <laughs> we, we've, toy, we've flirted with the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe. That, that would be fun. Yeah, or even just a Other, song now and again. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would be cool. We need to do another. <laughs> we always did them when we were inspired and you know we just kind of didn't have a really a structure to when we would make do one so mm. it's always just fun for us to try to some if we're inspired by a song sometimes that's the best way it just yeah. Yeah. comes out with what's on the radio at the yeah. moment now kimberly you are an amazing cook you have a book and a show and everything do any of you have other hidden talents that you're going to take over the world with? Oh, yes. Actually, Karen's about to, uh, she's in the process of launching her clothing line. Very nice. Fair child. Mm -hmm. and... In two weeks. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. What sort of things are in your wow. clothing line? What kinds of things? Yeah. Um, kind of like Nashville inspired with a little rock and roll edge to it. Fun things that the fans ask me about. Yeah. Like things that I like and they seem to inquire about. So there's some fringy little bits. There's a faux fur. There's um, you know, a long leopard dress. There's, it's fun. It's a little, little glamorous, a little, but always comfortable. I'm all about like being able to wear things. Next time at your show, everyone will be there in your clothes. <laughs> You'll be like, wow, they know our songs and they're wearing our I know. <laughs> I, like, awesome. I have thought about that. That's going to happen. You have to go show up to meet and greet in your clothes. In your clothes. Yes. <laughs> it's like, oh. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> so what about you boys? You must have some hidden talents, <laughs> we, apart from we, we, singing. We've been some ideas. You and I have been talking about uh, doing some craft beer. <laughs> you know, we just always stay creative. We write, we write music a lot. They're very talented. They have their, they still, they still have their. Okay, so talent. we have. So <laughs> they're very. You're drip feeding us talents. You see, we have your food, your clothes, yeah, and then. Yeah, we do it little by little. Yeah. They're, they're, they're gonna Ours has not been developed yet. Really. Yes, if you could start a hairline. Hair. He's gonna create hair extensions. Uh, He's got a brand new set of hair extensions. When they come out, out it'll be that, that crazy lady Erica said about my hair, and that's it. <laughs> so C two C, obviously, you played C two C. You're back here, and then C two C again. How does it feel to be part of the, our biggest festival? It's just the most amazing honor, and it, it feels so cool to be back because we were at the very first one. Yeah. But to come back now and play in a, a bigger way and, and to be a part of it as it's growing and becoming more and more of a thing it's just it's overwhelmingly awesome it's um, really a gift to us as a band i mean because it was our first one here just the massive audience there and then to be able to do that again 
really is a gift to us in our career over here. It's so incredibly helpful. Um, Love it. And do you, when you go back home, do they know about C2C? Is everyone sort of thinking, wow, the UK is suddenly a viable market. What's going on over there? <laughs> yeah. Or are you still keeping it no, a little secret? <laughs> No, they know, and the, the artists know, and that's why I think the lineups are so good. They know, they want to, they want to come. They've heard the good, the and good we news. Couldn't, we couldn't help but talk about it when we went yeah. back after our first shows here. It's like, man, we gotta go. Yeah. You gotta go experience that. I think is this gonna be Miranda's first time? It will be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm excited for you, everyone to. Oh, Miranda will never come. Never come. Yeah. And uh, I got the lineup a few weeks ago. It's like, yeah. Well, you'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> so it's exciting. Yeah. And last year when we had Luke Bryan and Jason Aldean, people were like, oh my goodness, yeah. they've come. <laughs> and so it's so nice that, you know, we're getting the big artists that yeah. will come here. And you guys going back and saying, you know, <laughs> that we're great. <laughs> It'll be Chris but, uh, Stapleton's first time too. Yeah. Yes, He's I coming. am thoroughly looking He's forward to see him. It's yeah, great. it's different here because in America, so you're driven by the charts, and mm -hmm. so they want sort of the newer stuff. But here, if there's not the traditional artists on the bill, then there's a bit of a hoo-ha about it. Yeah. So you know, having Chris Stapleton and you know Casey and people like that yeah. give it the nice balance that mm -hmm. a festival like this really needs. Totally. It's totally. more. It's pure. It's more pure over here. Yeah. You know, it's what the people want, not necessarily what the gatekeepers want. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We play more music every hour, every day. T turn on, tune in. Two Country Radio.